Hi, everyone. Um, thank you all so much for having me here. I'm William. I'm currently a postdoc at the Department of Biomedical Informatics at Harvard Med School, working with Griffin Weber on medical records. First off, I want to thank everyone who came to my talk. I was worried that Russia and Croatia were going to go into extra time, and it seems that that has happened. Um, four years ago, my talk, ISMB talk, was actually during the first half of the Germany-Argentina finals, so I'm very pleased that there are so many of you in this room. So, for my talk today, I'll be dividing it up into three parts. Uh, first, the general introduction to probabilistic sketches, so we're all on the same page. Then I'll discuss how we applied hyperlog log and minhash to medical record databases to speed up all inquiries. And finally, I'll get to the punchline of the talk, how we managed to reduce the space complexity of minhash from O of log n to O of log log n, where n is the size of our database. <coughs> so, what's a sketching algorithm? Some of you in the audience probably already know what this is, but just in case you don't, Sketching algorithms are sublinear space probabilistic data structures for representing big data in a compressed format. They allow us to compute fast, accurate estimates of things like set cardinality, membership, overlap, and they're widely used in routers, databases, search, etc. More recently in the bioinformatics world, the Minhash sketch formed the basis of Ondov et al.'s MASH software for metagenomic distance. To make the idea of sketches a bit more concrete, Let's introduce a simple one. Let's talk about the minimum value estimator to the count distinct problem. So suppose I asked you how many distinct items are in the list. Well, uh, that's easy, right? It's just a matter of counting. Uh, increment the counter for each item you see. Unfortunately, this doesn't work so well when there are many duplicates in the list because they'll get double counted. Instead, computer scientists figured out a um, more clever way to do this using random hash functions that assigns a random real number between 0 and 1 to every item in our domain. Then we take only the minimum value. This is easy enough to get a feel for. If you take a single random number between 0 and 1, what's the expectation of that random number? Well, it's 1 half, right? You just have one number, and the, minimum is also, the expectation of the minimum is also 1 half. But if you have two random numbers, then all of a sudden, the expectation of the minimum is a third. Three random numbers, the expectation is a fourth. Four, and nine random numbers, the expectation is a tenth. The more distinct items in our set, the smaller the minimum hash value is. And because we're using a hash function, duplicate items don't get double counted. Uh, as you, and so, this can be used to estimate the size of the set itself by just inverting it. Of course, the variance is really high if you do this only once, but you can repeat it k times with different hash functions. Um, as with any other experiment, if you repeat for k different trials, uh, the standard error of the mean decreases with the, with the factor of root k. So with just 100 trials, you get um, about 10% error, et cetera. Um, so of note, the expected minimum is about 1 over n plus 1, so we need around the order of log n bits of storage for each hash, for each trial of this. This was improved uh, by Flagellet et al., who figured out that you actually only need to store the, app, the order of magnitude to get a good estimate. Instead of storing the full hash, they store just the negative logarithm of the hash value, or equivalently, the position of the leading one in the binary expansion of the number. Um, so here, if you have a bunch of different objects, you hash them all, you get their binary uh, fractional expansion, and then you take the, the maximum number of runs before you get to a single one, in this case, five. Um, they, we won't get into this, but also instead of using k different hashes, they use a single hash function and just partition the data set into k buckets and store the minimum value within each bucket. The estimator becomes a bit more tricky, and there is a lot of math involved in actually computing from this, but in the end, you still get errors that are order um, root k and or 1 over root k, and where k is the number of buckets, and you only need O of log log n space, which is a significant improvement over just log n. Now, the important thing is that you can do for with sketches in general, you can often do computation in a distributed fashion and then merge these sketches later. You just have to take, in, for the case of union cardinality with hyperlog log, suppose you have three different sets, you do hyperlog log on each of these, and you get, and then to merge the sketches later, you just take the maximum value um, in, say, bucket one, the maximum value is five, and bucket two, the maximum value is six, et cetera, and this turns out to be exactly the same result you would get had you run hyperlog log on the union of these sets to begin with. Intersections are a bit harder, unfortunately. You can use the inclusion-exclusion principle, but the absolute estimation error is dependent on the size of the union, and so when the intersection is really tiny, the relative error in the intersection cardinality is pretty bad. Furthermore, the complexity grows exponentially with the number of sets, so this isn't very feasible for large set intersections, for, <coughs> for large numbers, intersections of large numbers of sets. Luckily, other sketches have been designed that are better for a set intersections. In particular, the Minhash sketch we mentioned earlier and we'll be working with today um, 
directly estimates the Jacquard Index. So Jacquard Index was originally used to measure ecological diversity in alpine ecosystems, but these days it's commonly used as a generic measurement of the similarity between sets. And it's defined as the ratio of the intersection size divided by the ratio, I'm uh, sorry, ratio of the intersection size to the union cardinality size. So that over everything. And obviously if we have an estimator for the Jacquard Index, all we have to do is multiply with an estimator for union cardinality, uh, for example, uh, hyperlog log, and that gets us a good estimate for the intersection size. Now, how exactly does Minhash work to compute the Chicard index? Back in 1997, Andre Broder was at AltaVista. As some of you might remember, AltaVista was one of the popular search engines of the time before Google took over the world. Um, and he wanted to solve the problem of near duplicate uh, web pages. So if you're a search engine, you might want to return the top 10 hits relevant to a user search query. But often web pages get duplicated uh, with minor variations at different addresses. And so Brother decided to compute the Jacquard index of the sets of phrases within web pages to do du near duplicate detection. Now, how does Minhash work? Suppose we have two sets of objects, A here and B over here, uh, with some amount of overlap in between in these gray colored circles. Um, so now we're going to do a random permutation, so a random shuffling of all of the items, and then consider the leftmost item in each set. So this leftmost item here is in set B, and the leftmost item in set A is this item that's in the intersection over here. Let's do it again. Uh, you get slightly different results. Um, and importantly, occasionally, the minimum items, the leftmost item, under each of the permutations for A and B is the same. Now, what's the chance of that? The chance of the, that the minimums are the same is precisely the chance that out of the union, this entire thing, a random permutation has moved an element of the intersection over to the left. And so that happens to be exactly the Jacquard index. Um, and so you can estimate your card index from empirical probabilities by repeating this k times uh, per usual. Um, in practice, of course, permutations are hard to work with. So instead, we store a random hash function. And for e we store a random hash for, for each of the hashes. We store the value for each of the sets A and B. And um, as before, with the naive minimum value set cardinality estimator, it takes about O of log n bits. Um, this will be important, because you'll notice that min hash, for whatever reason, takes log n bits, whereas Hyperlog log only takes log log n. Um, and we will fix that issue later. But first, let's work through a simple example. So suppose we have sets A and B with 5 million items and 10 million items, respectively. And we take seven hashes, minimum hashes of all of them. And actually measuring overlap for these sets would take a long time, because you'd have to do duplicate finding for all possibly 15 million elements. But by just doing this, these hash functions, you find that two of the minimum hashes match. And so you get an estimate of Jacquard index of about 2 over 7. This is obviously a bit coarse, but you would do this with more hashes. Um, additionally, as with hyperlog log, we can merge the min hash sketches for A and B to get, to get the min hash sketch of the union by just taking the smaller of the values for each of the hashes. As a technical note, uh, for most practical implementations of min hash these days, you do use some similar stochastic averaging trick, and you use a random partitioning into k buckets instead of doing some k hashes on the entire data set. OK, so now that all of you know as much about ha uh, sketching functions as I do, let's start applying it to medical records. So what we want to do is we have, suppose I am a large hospital system, and I have tons and tons of medical records. Or maybe I'm an insurance company, and I have tons of medical records. And I want to ask questions about how many of my patients match a particular Boolean query. For instance, maybe I'm interest, um, interested in how many patients have both hypertension and diabetes. So one solution to this problem is, well, you just read through the entire database and look to see how many patients have both. But once your databases start getting large, that takes a lot of time. So instead, uh, what we did is we created a hyperlog log and min hash sketch for each con medical concept. This might be a diagnosis, a medication, demographic information, et cetera. Then we can ask these questions by taking a union, taking a hyperlog log, because that gives you a lossless union. It gives you an estimate of the number of patients with both hypertension or diabetes, ah, sorry, di hypertension or diabetes. And or you can do an intersection using both hyperlog log and min hash to get patients with both with hypertension and diabetes. And furthermore, because these sketches are mergeable, you can combine multiple unions and intersections. And so we applied these techniques to a large database of 17 billion data facts for 70 million members covering 265,000 medical concepts. Um, luckily, we have access to large amounts of data at Harvard Med School. And we were able to, um, so the standard SQL instance takes about four terabytes, and um, you can get answers. So they're pretty decent. You get the exact answer uh, in some amount of time, ranging from two seconds to 20 minutes. 
Unfortunately, 20 minutes is a bit long. You don't want to be like sending out your query and then going out and getting a cup of coffee, coming back, twiddling your thumbs a bit, and then all of a sudden, oh, there's the answer. And then you realize you asked the wrong question, and then you have to do it over again. So if we had a way of doing this quicker, you could do more exploratory studies. And so this is exactly what we can do using combinations of sketches. So using hyperlog log plus minhash, we're able to get the queries down to the tens of millisecond range. Um, so that's orders, many orders of magnitude faster, and also orders of magnitude less size. So the entire sketch only takes up five gigabytes. Um, of course, this comes at a cost to the accuracy. And so for most queries using the default parameters that we chose, the error is between one and two percent, uh, but this is controllable. As you'll note for this last exa example of chronic pancreatitis and ulcerative colitis, I'm a mathematician, I don't actually know how to say these terms, but as you'll note, this one had a much higher error rate. Uh, this is something controllable though, and also predictable. So we can tell the practitioner that um, they should expect a much higher error rate when they run this query, and so they'll know to do a full slower query. <coughs> Additionally, it often when the sketches are m most inaccurate is precisely when you have a small answer. And so for those small answers, often the, the standard SQL query doesn't take that long. Uh, yeah, okay, so this is why we care about this in general, but we've seen what sketches are and how they apply to medical records and to all sorts of other applications in computer science. But if you've been paying attention to the complexities, you'll notice hyperlog log uses O of log log n bits per bucket. Minhash uses O of log n bits per bucket. Now, can we use insights from hyperlog log to improve the um, uh, asymptotic complexity to O of log log n? And obviously I wouldn't be up here if the answer were no. And so it turns out that the trick is you just have to go back and use a floating point notation for your uh, values. So I'm just gonna jump ahead to the punchline and I'll give the proofs in a moment if I still have time. Uh, actually, I think I'm doing all right on time. So uh, you start with all your items in the set, and then you hash them to some uh, value between zero and one, and do the binary expansion. And then instead of storing a fixed number of bits after it, uh, or uh, we store the entire number in a floating point notation, where we first specify how many zeros there are, where the position of the first one bit, and then so this is the order of magnitude of the number. And then you use an additional R bits to store the mantissa. So uh, those of you who are familiar with scientific notation, this is just the stuff that comes after the decimal point. And it turns out that, well, obviously since you're storing a fixed number of bits here, R for the mantissa, and Q is uh, exactly the same uh, object that you get from hyperlog log. So hyperlog log is only stored in the order of magnitude. So the uh, asymptotic space complexity here is order log log n. Um, so there are more details in the archive posting, but this, uh, since there are some technical considerations with stochastic averaging, but this is basically what we do. This is the central intuition. And this seems to work pretty well. So here I have um, a fixed size sketch, so I'm using the same amount of memory, and I'm comparing Jacquard index estimation for identically sized sets with Jacquard index of one third, so about 50% overlap, um, so the maximum relative error is two over here. Um, and I have three different sketches. One here in green is the hyperminhash sketch, and so you can see that when you start getting the cardinality is around two to the 23, things start going wrong for a 256 byte sketch. Um, however, the equivalent minhash sketch with the same number of buckets, things start going wrong because of accidental collision around two to the 12. Um, you can uh, do slightly better with minhash by just decreasing the amount of buckets you're storing and increasing the number of bits you have to prevent accidental hash collision, but then you're trading off on error over the entire range. And so hyper min hash can give you better accuracy or larger cardinalities or both, depending on the explicit parameter ranges. Now, why does this work? So I'm gonna get into some math here, but the basic idea is we have some distri joint distribution of minimum hashes for two sets X and Y. Um, so this is if X is five elements and Y is 10 elements. You'll see that all of the probability density for the joint distribution lies in this lower left-hand corner. And ideally what you want is you want any collisions to be real. And so you want the probability of mass that's actually exactly on this line, this line across the diagonal. And if you had an infinite precision hash function, you could do that. But we unfortunately don't have infinite precision hash functions. So a b-bit hash function um, divides over each axis into two to the b segments, so there are four to the b boxes, and we approximate that diagonal line by saying when the, um, by covering it with these boxes. And so the probability of accidental collision is just the probability of mass that's contained in these boxes that wouldn't be contained along the line. Um, so what you'll notice though is we're in this space out here in the upper right quadrant of the unit square, you don't have any probability density at all. So why are we spending all of the bits to code for that? And it turns out that we don't need to. Um, so you might think, what if we just use the leading one indicator from hyperlog log, just store the order of magnitude? 
Um, this is the right idea, but it turns out that when you do this, the collision error rate is just too high. Um, however, that's the right direction, and it turns out if you add on the mantissa onto that, so a couple extra bits, um, you narrow down the entire the, uh, range of collisions while still maintaining this sort of adaptive precision that cares more about the small numbers. And so you aren't using very many bits to store um, to deal with collisions up here because those probably don't happen. It turns out that uh, these numbers are actually very nicely balanced together. And so the more bits, the more collisions you're likely to have, the smaller the collisions are likely to be. And so the more likely it is that you have a long run of zeros before your first one in the minimum value. Um, of course, in practice, you have some uh, precision limit, but we're going to ignore that for now. And uh, you end up with this really ugly formula for the num number of collisions you expect. That is, so you can actually compute this for f small values, but you don't really want to. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to upper bound the collision chance by covering, the, covering it with these four different regions. And so we're going to integrate over and get the probability mass within these regions. And recall that the probability of all these regions is uh, strictly non-negative, which means that we can do this and it is an upper bound. And by doing that, we can bound the expected value of number of collisions. And we can also bound the variance as about the square of the uh, ex expectation. So once we do that, we're done. I am running out of time, so I'm not actually going to go through all the details. It's basically mostly just a lot of straightforward manipulation. There are some integration tricks that you have to use. But in the end, you end up finding that the expected number of collisions is 6 over 2 to the r plus n over 2 to the 2 to the q plus r. So over here, on the right side, this is basically just saying that so long as the number of items is less than 2 to the 2 to the q, so um, is uh, doubly exponential in, two, uh, in q, you, uh, you won't have that many collisions there. And this here is saying basically that so long as the Jacquard index is bigger than 1 over 2 to the r, you probably won't have that many errors there either. Um, so in conclusion, sketching algorithms such as Minhash and Hyperlog log can provide fast and efficient answers to bioinformatic queries at a controllable cost and error whenever you're dealing with things like intersections, unions, or things that can be rephrased as that. Um, we can further apply techniques derived from Hyperlog log to decrease the space complexity of Minhash from log space to log log space, uh, which is what I just showed and is currently awaiting review at a journal. Hopefully that will turn out all right. And um, so to conclude, I have to give my acknowledgments. So the study was supported by the, an NIH BD2K award um, and also National Genome Research Institute. Uh, there, sorry, BD2K from the National Human Genome Research Institute and the National Council Institute. I'm also lucky enough to be supported on a National Library of Medicine training grant. And just to mention that Griffin Weber will be giving a demo of data visualization at the NIH dbd 2 k booth tomorrow. And we'll have an example where we've actually applied some of these techniques to an I2B2 uh, medical query database. Thank you very much. So the, yeah, so we end up with a, a larger error rate in our estimate. Right, okay. It's only that that's, those are more specific queries, so I would think that the R would be Yeah, so that's actually the thing. Um, with the queries where the answer is smaller, often the sketch methods will be less accurate. Mm -hmm. But those are also the queries for which running the ordinary query, you see that the ordinary query layer takes only 1.5 seconds anyway. And so what we're doing is we're do the queries that are normally slow, we're speeding up a ton. Mm -hmm. And the queries that are, well, I mean, we're still speeding that up, but not by as much. And we have some amount of error rate, but that is controllable. So if we just use more buckets, uh, so if we use, say, another two times as much space, we can decrease that error by another uh, root two. Mm 